What's up guys, I'm here in South Africa and actually today I'm heading into Lesotho. I'm on the edge of the Draxenbergs Mountains and then I'm going kind of around them and then into the Kingdom of Lesotho. That'll be a new country for me. I've never been there and I'm really excited for it. But it's a long drive. I've got like five hours and at the very least it is beautiful on this drive. So let's hit the road, let's move and let's head to Lesotho. So I just cleared out of uh, South Africa and now I'm crossing into Lesotho, crossing the bridge, new country coming up. That was easily, easily, easily the easiest border I've ever crossed in my life, the quickest border I've ever crossed in my life. I'm the only one at this crossing. And when I showed up at the crossing, the girl who looked about 14 years old <laughs> comes into the immigration office, takes my passport, stamps it without looking at it, literally took me less than a minute to uh, cross both borders and now I'm in a new country the kingdom of Lesotho and judging by the views ahead this is going to be unbelievable I'm heading now to a place called Bokong Bokong National Reserve hoping I can find somewhere to sleep there tonight and explore a little bit this is wild just crossing the border it's like a different world I'm heading towards a place called Katza, Katza Dam, which is near Bokong. <laughs> it is crazy here. I'm gonna flip it around. Look at that. This place is crazy. Lesotho is crazy so far. Absolutely stunning. And I haven't seen signs of another tourist so far. Wow, I'm gonna flip it around again. It doesn't even make sense how beautiful it is right here. Um, this road is crazy. I'm gonna flip it around again. <laughs> okay, you couldn't see it that time, but like basically I'm on a cliff edge and it's straight down the other direction. It's absolutely stunning here. I can't even put it into words how beautiful it is here. And I'm gonna flip it around again. Look at that. That was uh, one of the craziest drives I've ever done. And I wish I could film that. I wish I could have filmed that. That road was, was windy and crazy. And it cleared 3,100 meters at the top. So I'm feeling a little bit of the altitude actually, which is funny because uh, I've been much higher than this. I've been up to like 4,000 meters, 5,000 meters before even. And uh, yeah, I guess just because it was such a quick climb, I got a little bit of a light head going on. So I showed up at Bokong Nature Reserve and I guess the park is closed, maybe because there's no tourism this time of year or in general in Lesotho. I'm amazed there's no tourists around, like none. And there's very little, if not any infrastructure for tourism as well. So I left there and that was kind of a mistake because as I pushed farther, I realized that there's no accommodation or, uh, or food in between and I'm hungry. So I'm gonna push back up the hill. It's like an hour to get back to where I was, but there was one guest house way back there. So I'm gonna make a move back towards it and hope to get some food and some shelter for the night. So I finally found myself a guest house and on the way here, there was just an epic sandstorm and rainstorm. It was wild. It's still not cleared up outside, but uh, it means I'm not going to be shooting anything today, which sucks because it is beautiful in this country. And I haven't taken a single picture yet, which is so weird. But I think a lot of this comes down to the struggle I had on my last journey in Africa. If you guys didn't know, I was in Africa for over two years at one point, including like a six, seven month epic scooter ride. So in that time, I saw a lot of amazing things and I had a lot of an amazing experiences, but it was extremely hard to capture that on photo and video. And coming up to Lesotho is such a change from, from South Africa. It reminds me a lot of Central and West Africa in terms of infrastructure in that there just isn't a lot and you spend a lot of your time 
trying to figure out how things work, trying to figure out somewhere to sleep, and you don't spend as much time as you'd like exploring, you spend a lot of your time trying to figure things out and lost. But that's okay, that's part of the fun, that's half of the fun and I have to say, Lizutu so far in the six, seven hours I've seen it, is one of the most fascinating countries I've ever been in. And I hope that I can find a way to explore it more um, because today I, I explored it from, from the roads and nothing else. I'm back on the road here in Lizutu this morning. I got kind of a late start, but that's okay. Yeah, so on the road again, I decided I'm gonna take the long road today. I had to go like two hours back as I smashed through some potholes. I had to go like two hours backwards yesterday to get some accommodation. I wanna see as much of this country as possible. Even if it's just from the driver's seat, even if it's just from the car, it's just so fascinating to me. So uh, I'm taking the long way today, even if it's like a 10 hour drive. I was just coming down the pass and I hit uh, a rock and smashed up the rim on my tire and blew a tire. So this lovely couple from Joburg has stopped to help me change this tire and then hopefully I'll be able to find a bush mechanic somewhere down the ro road to fix it up and luckily I had a spare tire with me so yeah a bit of good luck along with bad luck. Got the tire off and we pushed forward ahead and now I'm like at some mountaintop gas station and this is the problem with the tire. I smashed the rim on a rock and so now the air is escaping. The good news is the tire is still in shape but we're gonna have to do some smashing here to fix this rim. For the time being, I'm all repaired, uh, but it was a bush mechanic job, which means we were using a hammer to fix the busted rim, um, and it's probably not a permanent fix. So we'll see how this holds up. In a couple of videos in the past, I've been talking about how I've been a little bit lost lately, trying to figure out things, trying to travel with a purpose, trying to find a reason, trying to get excited about travel again. And I think the biggest problem is money. I had money. I have a little bit more money now. And because I have a little bit more money now, I travel softer and I miss these grand adventures. It's as stupid as it sounds, when I have a tire problem, that's when I get to connect with people. Otherwise, I'm just driving around checking things out. But when I smash a rock, I meet people on the side of the road that are willing to help me. I meet a bush mechanic who is so nice and helpful. I meet people that way. That's where I get my engagement. That's where I get these challenges. That's where I get my cultural interaction. That's where I meet people. And uh, when you travel soft, and when you take the fancy bus, when you take the fancy train, and when you stay in the four-star hotels or three-star hotels or five-star hotels, you miss a lot of that true adventure that you get when you travel to countries like Lesotho. And I immediately feel better today about life. I really do. After a long day, I made it to Semantong Lodge, which is absolutely lovely. You can see the setting right along the river, and then the lodge is right up there. And uh, even though the sun's about to go down and it's an hour hike, I'm gonna hike to the waterfall. This is the waterfall that I came to Lizutu for. This is like the main reason to go, and I can't remember the name of the fall. You know rule number one of this show is not to make fun of any name I pronounce? Well. I don't even know the name of this. I'm gonna guess because I see a sign that it's Maletsunyani Falls and it looks unreal. So I've got to get moving, get my hike on, and then I'm spending two full days here. So this is basically just a location scout, uh, check out the falls, and then we'll see what happens from there. I made it to the waterfall and there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that it's stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Really impressive. They're much taller and bigger than I expected. The bad news, or one of the bad news is, the bad news is, what, I can't even talk anymore. One of the bad news things is that it's the dry season kind of, so there's not a lot of water flowing where you probably can't see, but you'll see later in the clips. There's like a whole gap there a lot of time there's just water tumbling down from that and it's much more impressive, I think, at least from the photos I've seen. The second bad news is that the sun sets over there 
and it casts this nasty shadow there. So I've got to come back either when it's cloudy or maybe it's sunrise. Uh, I'm calling it a show. I'm sorry that this episode has been a lot of driving clips and a lot of talking clips, but uh, that's just kind of how it's been so far here in Lesotho. I will say that Lesotho is quickly becoming one of my favorite countries in Africa. In fact, it's quickly becoming one of my favorite countries in the world. It's just so wild and open and free, and it's really reinvigorated my spirit. I needed Lesotho. I needed this experience so bad, and I'm, I'm really stoked, and I'm really on good energy, really good energy right now. And uh, that's something I'm really thankful for here in Lesotho. I'm going to leave you guys with some video clips of the waterfalls and then I'm heading back to my lodge and going to sleep. Tomorrow's episode I think I'm going to do a getting the shot here at the waterfalls, maybe at sunset carrying into some stars and maybe into sunrise. We'll see what happens with the weather. Anyways, enough talking, enough driving clips for one episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, stay tuned. Peace. <laughs>